This is SDB Tile Map Editor. It's a C, C++ library for editing tile maps that you can integrate into your game. There's a separate overview video. This video is going into fine details to make sure you know of all of the options that are available to you. So first of all, although it's not built into the editor, you can resize the UI. you just have to handle that on the integration side and you can actually do similar tricks to resize the uh, the tile map itself although I'm not going to show that. Uh, the panels each of them have two little things that you can control there may be a third one someday. The green one is used to resize you need to use both left and right mouse button so that extends and retracts it and the yellow one is used to juice what side it is. If you right click it it goes to the right side and if you left click it goes to the left side and it should just be a toggle and I should fix that but instead it clicking on the left means left. Um, the whole panel itself has a control here that if you left click it you can resize and if you right click it it'll hide it. Well, the toolbar is just tools there's no special interaction for that the background, uh, I mean the, the tile map itself, if you hold down the spacebar, uh, you can drag it and that lets you have things that go off the edge of the screen. There are no controls to like teleport to a specific place on the thing. I can add that if someone needs it, uh, uh, but I don't know how it would work. So give me feedback if that's something that's important to you. Uh, it's a little bug if you try to drag outside the thing you can't actually drag it you can only drag it in here so I'll fix that someday so let's go through the panels the info panel you can use this to adjust how large your map is and if you shift click or control click yeah depends what you've integrated as the control key it'll jump by 10 at a time uh, the XY shows where your current thing is if for some reason you need to know that and this shows what brush you currently have selected for painting with and is also where the eyedropper feedback will show up. The layer control let's put some stuff down so that we can see what the layer control does. So you can select a layer and you can only have one layer selected and that will control which layer you paint into if you're using uh, tiles that can paint into more than one layer. I'm using tiles that only ever paint into a specific layer so this control is never important for me in this demo. You can hide individual layers. And you can protect them in three different or two different states. So unlocked, protected, and locked. So in unlocked you can paint freely into it. Let's, uh, let's take the fourth level which is the let's think about this one. So protected, I can still paint into it, but I can't erase in it. And locked, I can't even paint into it or erase from it. Uh, and solo just shows only that layer regardless of, the, and unlocks, temporary unlocks a layer regardless of the state of things. If, if you need to easily see what's going on and you don't want to change because you have these set to bury states, you can just solo and see what's going on. Uh, so here we have the tile palette and you know if the UI is sized up you may get a scroll bar for it. Um, you can resize this. If the control is a little weird just left and right click until something happens. And you can filter them down to these types which you define yourself when you create the map. So that's another way to deal with having a large set of these. Since obviously in this demo I have very few. Okay, so that's all of those panels except for the object panel. But the object panel is defined based on the data that you provide, so there's not much to say about that. So let's go through the controls. Let's uh, unhide these. So the selection, it, you can select a single tile or you can drag out a rectangle. Other than that, uh, selecting a single tile 
is what opens up the object panel. So if you have a single tile selected, the object panel will be open. Uh, but as soon as you're out of select mode, that selection goes away. Uh, because I don't have support for things like only painting inside a selection region, so I didn't want that to be true. If that's something that you think is more valuable to elite, have a selection stay around, tell me about it, and I can look at adding something like that. Uh, the brush, you have a particular thing chosen and you paint it. And if you move too fast, you, the mouse will skip. And if you right click, you'll erase. Now note, as long as I'm holding down the right click, I'll only erase whatever the type was that I had. But if I let go and right click, it'll erase something different. Uh, and in fact, now it will erase anything. So if I erase the thing I have selected, it will never erase anything else. If I erase anything other than that, it will erase anything. And it erases one thing each time I move into it. So if I have things stacked up, it erases one thing. And then when I go back through them, erases again. That's kind of arbitrary. I didn't really know what the right thing to do was, but that's what it does. There's a explicit eraser that you can use to, uh, that doesn't work. I don't remember what the point of the eraser was given that you have those other controls. So we'll save, uh, I'll fix that before I release this, but I'm not gonna fix this video. Okay. There's a rectangle tool for painting rectangles of things and also erasing rectangles of things. And the erasing is kind of weird. It erases one thing from each layer. So if I do this, you can see that that tile, only one thing gets erased from it. That's, you know, I don't know what the right thing to do is. Again, you can use the layer controls to help do that. So if I bring that back, I can say, I only want to erase the people, then I can select that layer. And now that's the only layer I'm affecting. Or I could solo it to be even clearer but just selecting is good enough. If you want to select multiple layers, if you want to say, I want to erase people, but not the background tile, uh, you can lock the background tile or just protect it actually, right? And now that should erase, oh, I stopped this one selected. That will erase everything. Uh, so that's the rectangle tool. Oh, I left out the, sorry, the selection tool. Of course, you can drag these rectangles around, well, except this is protected. So you can drag a rectangle around. It's still protected. Oh, I locked it. You can drag a rectangle around with left click, and if you right click, you'll cancel it. Let's see. Eyedropper can be used to see what you have in a given tile, and it'll cycle through everything in that tile. There's not much more to that. And the link tool, you use left drag to link objects. I don't have anything that's linkable in this, so it lets me draw the link, but it will never connect it. I have to, the integration has, has to specify whether a given link is allowed or not. Uh, because I want to demo that in a second, I better actually put one in. So here I draw a link. So when I'm drawing the link, you can see it highlights when it's a legit target, and then it turns into a color specified by the game for what that type of link should be. This shows links or not by default. It will only show links for objects where the source is on the screen. So if it goes very far off screen, it will not. Um, eventually I'll add something. So when you select a, t a thing, it'll show all links to that thing, even if they're coming in from off screen, but that's not in this version. Uh, and then there's a grid that you can turn on and you can choose whether the grid extends uh, out past everything. It's actually whether the grid is, yeah, I don't remember what the distinction is. There's some other distinction. Oh, yes, right. The grid, in this case, the grid appears above layer zero, but under all the other layers. Whereas in this case, the grid is on top of all of the layers. So you can see, if you look at this, you can see it gets shrunk by that. Oh, and it's actually on top of the link, so I should fix that too. Uh, and then there's undo and redo, and there's not much to say about that other than that, hey, you can undo. And, uh, and, and whoops, the if you undo all the way, the redo goes away. That was a bug that I should fix before it releases. So 
if you have a rectangle selected, you can copy it or you can cut it and that copies into a paste buffer. It obeys the layer selection so it will only cut layers that are allowed to be modified and it will only copy layers that are visible. And then pasting, you paste and then you choose where you want to go and that also will obey all the layer selections. I believe that is everything. Now I'm going to go watch this video and fix these bugs. Thanks.